Hey friends, Asher with Incense. Hope you're doing really well. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about a really expensive fragrance. This one's gonna run you $405 for the full presentation, 100 milliliter size bottle. It is Celebration from Royal Crown. I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can pick this one up and also where you can pick up samples of this one in case you wanna try it out first. You can get a little tiny one mil or you can get a little three or five mil spray. This one right here has one of the most interesting openings that I've smelled in a fragrance in quite a while. And I'll let you guys know why as we get into this and get into the, the fragrance breakdown and everything. Also show you guys this presentation up close. It's really, really heavy, very luxurious. So let's jump into this. Let's talk about celebration. I think the very first time I heard about this fragrance was on Rise Frag's channel. And if you've never heard about him, check him out. I'll leave a link in the description. He did an unboxing of this and I feel like it was maybe four or five years ago, something like that, and then did a review afterward. And that kind of piqued my curiosity way back when. Another thing with this fragrance, if you go to Fragrantica, the note breakdown is wrong, which is not really a surprise. Fragrantica has all kinds of errors on the website as far as their note breakdowns go from fragrance to fragrance to fragrance. The note breakdown on Fragrantica is way, way more simplistic than what the actual note breakdown for this one is. And because I was not going to memorize the entire note breakdown, I went ahead and wrote it down. So I'm gonna give that to you guys right now. It's got a top of mandarin orange, bergamot, mint, lemon, rosemary, and chamomile, a mid of orange blossom, genestra, olive flower, iris, jasmine, and narcissus, and a base of oak moss, absinthe, cypress, artemisia, and mastic. Now, a lot of times you'll see absinthe and artemisia used interchangeably to mean the same thing, wormwood, but here they have it specifically broken out into two separate entries, artemisia and also absinthe. Let's really quickly take a look at the presentation here. Now I have just the bottle. This is actually a tester that I've got right here. Uh, I've got some other Royal Crown presentations, but I would have to dig them out to get the box out. Uh, but here's a photo, and that's not really as good as me showing it to you, but I will do in a pinch. The presentation box-wise is really nice. It's got this soft leather feel to the top of it, very heavy. It comes with a sticker, sort of wax seal looking thing on the front that you have to carefully, carefully take off without ripping the leather off. Um, which I did twice. But if you can manage to not do it, which I did once, then it looks really nice when you get that off there and the box looks all nice and smooth. If I recall correctly, the reason that happened with me was it was really cold outside when they came in. This was like a couple years ago, I think, when I bought those bottles. And um, when I brought them in, I didn't give them time to get up to room temperature. I just automatically went and started removing the sticker and it just... So anyway, with that story out of the way, here is the bottle. Like I mentioned before, this is really heavy, which you can tell when you look at this and you see how much glass is down there at the bottom. That's like a full inch of just solid glass at the bottom of the bottle. Really, really nice. The cap, very heavy as well. It's got this Italian flag sort of designed to it with the uh, red, white, and green. Then you've got all these crystals around on the cap. Also, some people, this is not gonna be to their taste. They're gonna say, oh, it looks a little bit tacky. I think it's actually pretty cool because when you take it off, it is very heavy. If it was really light and flimsy, then it would look super cheap, but because it does have the heft to it, makes it feel a little bit nicer, look a little bit nicer, at least in my eyes. And then you've got your atomizer right up here. The cap does not click into place, slides into place. Do not, do not pick this up by the cap because this bottle is heavy and it's gonna fall right off and you're gonna bust your bottle. I know a lot of you out there don't pick up fragrances by the cap, but I know a lot of you do. So with Royal Crown, don't do it. You get the RC on the bottom of the bottle. Does not stand for RC Cola, RC Fragrances, <laughs> Royal Crown Fragrances. And if you are a fan of RC Cola, let me know in the chat below. Or are you a Pepsi guy? Are you a Coke guy? For me, I'm a Coke guy, but We'll fight it out in the comments. And then you've got the name of the fragrance right there, Celebration, down the bottle in gold foil. Looks really nice. I'll go ahead and spray this for you guys a couple times so you can check out the atomizer. And let's actually get, yeah, let's get one that's not had anything sprayed on it. And uh, here we go. Could you see that? Hopefully. Atomizer's good, it's solid. So looking at the note breakdown, 
With this one, you would think what? Probably green, citric, and, oh, I got some of that in my mouth. I don't know how I managed to do this, but when I sprayed the fragrance over there and I came back over here and started talking, I got it in my mouth. It is on my tongue. And now my tongue is <laughs> going numb. <laughs> so looking at the note breakdown, you get a pretty good idea of how this one is gonna smell, but not exactly. And I'll break that down for you guys. You've got a bunch of citrus here in the opening. You got orange, you got bergamot, you've got lemons. You've got this big citric combo. To me, it smells a little bit like grapefruit, actually, like the grapefruit rind kind of tart. It's actually really, really nice. It doesn't smell like grapefruit that you would find in something like Blue de Chanel, for example. It has this, this real tartness, this liveliness to it. It's very nice. Now, as far as the notes listed, the one that it would be most uh, close to would be the orange. But to me, it actually smells like grapefruit. And then there is the mint. The mint in celebration is big. It is really big. When you first smell this, even off the top, you can actually kind of get this icy chilled feeling in the back of your nose when you smell it. And when you spray it on your skin, at least for me, it kind of has a chilling effect where you spray the fragrance. And that lasts for maybe 20 minutes. And that's all the mint here. So the mint in celebration is very mentholated, very mentholated. Actually, out of every fragrance I own, and at this point, that's probably over 2000, this one right here is the most mentholated fragrance that I own. And it is not close at all. So if you're looking for a fragrance with a real heavy mentholation to it, this is it right here. Celebration is just menthol to the max. And that's for the first maybe 45 minutes to an hour. You pick it up right away, but initially you've got that citrus punch that kind of distracts you from that mentholation. And that citrus is really good, really good when you first spray it on, but it fades away pretty quick. Off my skin, that citrus really steps back within you know, five, six, seven minutes. And then that, that mint, that mentholated vibe that this has really comes up and just grabs your attention. And for the next hour, that's, that's the main thing. And as that steps back, you know, 45 minutes to an hour in, the florals in the mid start to come out more and the fragrance opens up a little bit more. Through the mid, you've got florals, iris, narcissus, jasmine. Of those three, iris I pick up more than uh, the jasmine or narcissus. And then in the dry down, this one has sort of a, a green, but still fresh woody vibe. And that's where you're gonna be getting your cypress, along with a bit of oak moss, mastic, and then the artemisia. With celebration though, what's gonna make it or break it is that mint. My wife, for example, was a huge fan of uh, bar soaps or body washes that have menthol in them so that they give you that chilling effect on your skin. She's a huge fan of that. And so when she smells this, she loves it because she loves that menthol smell, that menthol vibe. If you don't like that though, then it is going to overwhelm you. There's no way around that. It will overwhelm you. If you don't like that, you're done for. And for me, probably took me you know, five, six, seven wearings before I came around on it because it overwhelmed me when I smelled it the first time, second time, third time. I was like, ah, man, that is strong. Over multiple wearings though, when you know what to expect, when you know what's coming, it's not so bad and then you start to like it. But this could be that type of fragrance where you have to wear it and then wear it again and then wear it again and then wear it again before you really start to enjoy it and be able to take it in and, and wear it and be like, yeah, I enjoy this, I dig this, because that opening is strong. And once that menthol does step back and everything opens up, it is very, very, very pleasant. So super pleasant in the opening, super pleasant about an hour in. It's just, you are in for a ride. You're in for a ride five minutes in to 45 to 60 minutes in. But I really dig that because this is the only fragrance I own as of now that's like this. And I enjoy having something that's different than everything else and something that's gonna set me apart. So I really enjoy that at this point, but I had to come around to it. 
In terms of performance, six to seven hours typically, but I don't spray this one on all that heavily. So do keep that in mind. And that's because initially, this one is strong, strong in terms of projection. That first hour, hour and a half, it really jumps off my skin. So I don't spray too heavily. And I'm getting about six to seven hours with maybe two or three sprays. So if I sprayed this one on heavily, I think it would last a whole lot longer. But frankly, I don't want to because it projects so much initially. I don't want to overwhelm myself. In terms of seasons, spring, summer, fall, though because this is a citrus mint fragrance, it's meant more for spring and summer wear. I would say of all the seasons, spring is the one that would fit this one the best. In terms of day or night, more of a daytime scent. And this is more of a casual fragrance for me, uh, not one I would think of really as an office fragrance. Uh, you could wear it to the office, but maybe one spray <laughs> is what I would do. I think it's more for just casual, uh, casual use, enjoying yourself or out with friends, things like that. So there we go, Royal Crown celebration. You want menthol, this is what you need. This is what you need. Huge mint fan, this. All right, guys, if you smelled that one, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Like I said, I'm gonna link to that one below also so you can check it out there if you wanna sample it or buy it or any of that good stuff. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.